folks, that's true. Folks, we're doing it again. We're discussing distorted thinking. The purpose for this is to make it very, very clear how not to get stuck in these, right? So I'm going to bring this up a little bit each time because I want to make sure we're clear what each of these videos are. There's an entire fucking playlist of them. Check them out. These are important. One of the things that I think is really important to notice also is that I am heavens the foods. So if you don't want to see me eat, just listen to the stream. It's fine. Today, I wanted to talk about this one. We're going to be talking about emotional reasoning. You believe that what you feel must be true automatically. If you feel stupid and boring, then you must be stupid and boring. So this is an interesting one because this concept of distorted thinking is based around the notion that your emotional state can be trusted to a point where it is giving you valid information. Now, excuse me. So we have to be very careful about our language here because this is generally what I say to clients. Emotions are always valid. The thoughts that propel those emotions or create those emotions are not. I liken it to a magic show, right? So you can go to a magic show. You can see the magician pull out his wand and presto changeo, a fucking rabbit comes out of the hat. Now we know clearly that there's some trick to it, a sleight of hand. But the reality is, is that at the moment, especially if you're younger, there's suddenly this like, what I'm seeing must be real. And in the same way, often we have these thoughts come up, spontaneous mentations, as some people call them. That just pop out of nowhere in your head. And often they're based around biases against others, ourself, our world, whatever. And I mean biases both positive and negative. So you have this thought, man, I'm so fucking stupid. And then you feel shame, you feel hurt, you feel upset because you believe that to be true. This is where we get into CBT again is, is that thoughts promote emotions, emotions promote behavior. So if you feel it, it must be true. But the fact is, and this is something to watch out for in two forms. The first is the example here. Feeling embarrassed or feeling like you did something dumb doesn't mean you're dumb. Your behavior could have been unintelligent in that moment, but that is not a grand generalization of you as a person. We come back to the notions of overgeneralization and black and white thinking we've done previously. This is one of the things that I think is really important, is that when we're talking about emotional reasoning, we can get into this place where all of the negative things, our parents, our society, our gender roles, whatever it is, can at some level tell us who we are. And because of the emotional bias, the confirmation bias we have where we feel like that's more true, there's a thing in social psych they call the negative bias, which is when we hear negative information, we have a tendency to believe that over other things, um, which is by evolutionary psych standards, I believe, a form of um, – survival mechanism. Basically, what happens is you essentially, because you, excuse me, I keep hiccuping, because you feel this way, it must be the way it is. Um, chat said, like a self-fulfilling prophecy, kind of. Definitely can go that direction, I hope. Tiamat said, more like mistaking a moment for a permanent characteristic. Yeah, yeah. So like if I do a dumb thing, right? That's not the same thing as me being an idiot. One of the things I see getting the problem here with emotional reasoning is this idea. Say you're a kid with ADHD and your parents ask you to do a chore and it's a chore you don't like. So you naturally let it filter out of your head and you forget all the fuck about it. Then your parents come up and say, why did you do the chore? And you don't have an answer because this wasn't like a co like a fucking conscious process, right? And they go, we well, are just being lazy. You just didn't want to. They assign intention to you like we talked about earlier. 
So because you feel bad for not getting the thing done, you assume it must be you made a choice or in some ways, maybe you are just lazy. One thing that's happened in the course of my actual therapeutic work is I don't believe in the term lazy anymore. I think it's just stupid. Like, I really do. I think it's not actually a good descriptor of any behavior I've ever seen. Every single person, including neurodivergent people that I've ever seen who are harder to get proactive, usually it's because of a couple of factors. Lack of proper social and academic supports, lack of incentive structures, lack of understanding is the one of the ways that they have to actually incentivize and motivate. Short version, there's not incentives and systems in place to help them with the thing. So instead of a parent actually doing their fucking job and saying, hey, you know, what can I do to incentivize this for you? Or what can we do to make this more important? Instead, they presume the kid just doesn't give a fuck or the kid's just being argumentative. The kid then internalizes this, this emotional reasoning. The parent's making an overgeneralization based on this one piece of evidence, most of it factually incorrect because they're projecting. And then the kid emotionally reasons that they feel bad, so they must that that must be true. Does that make sense? Yeah, but the problem is, is like, how do you come to that conclusion, Brittany? Like, so again, most people don't think in terms of good and bad faith. They tend to, they tend to assume the negatives, right? They tend to assume the notion is, is that the person just doesn't want to do it. They don't have any desire to do the thing. So thus they must be in some ways problematic right like they assume a character trait rather than a lack of like environmental and like social incentive incentivization i think this is really toxic because in a lot of ways what it essentially does is it prevents you from it prevents you from being able to in kind of a meaningful way from being able to understand the things that are affecting you around, you know, affecting you um, at an environmental or social level. So a good example of this could be as well is if you're someone who's say like a person of color, let's say African-American, and you've been told all of these negative things about African-Americans for the last, you know, 20 plus years of your life. And these things are reified by the things that your, your elders say, and they're reified by what white society says. Wouldn't it make sense that someone might internalize that narrative? And by definition, because of that internalization, they might in turn then believe this thing about themselves. They will emotionally reason that because they feel bad about not being as productive or successful as some arbitrary standard set before them, that they must be at some level the thing that's said, being lazy, shiftless, whatever term that you want to use. So the thing is, is that the reason why this is important is because it affects us in a lot of different ways. One of them, and this is a little bit more the aggressive version, is, is that besides just internalizing very shitty narratives, what can sort of happen is also this becomes the justification for shitty political values. Scott said, Ah, like a negative external moment that can turn into an internal feedback loop if you parse the one moment as your self-identity. Absolutely, Scott. So one of the things that's super important is that when we're dealing with our political adversaries, right? So if we're talking about um, Trump supporters, QAnon, Nazis, whomever, the reality of the situation is is that fascistic behavior is entirely emotionally based. It has no interest in intellectualization. It has no interest in data. It has no interest in facts. If you look through Umberto Eco's 14 characteristics of the fa of the era fascist, nothing on there is about necessarily being right. It's assumed you're right. These things are said because they feel true. 
The reason why Adolf Hitler was so successful at turning Germany against Jewish people is because there was longstanding thousand-year-old fucking persecution there already. But also you can get into this problem where he essentially, like everyone else did to lots of different groups, emotionally reasoned that these people have been keeping us down. People don't have proof to say there's some Jewish cabal running the world, but they feel like that's true. They're wrong, of course. That's conspiratorial and nonsensical thinking. But it's the same thing with flat earthism. Watch flat earthers sometimes. It's really fascinating if you look at them from a conspiratorial perspective, because what they do is they do tests, they realize the tests fail, and then they make up reasons why the test failed that still allow them to maintain the view or the value of themselves as a flat earther. Their views on flat earth are completely unwilling to change. They're concrete. So they emotionally reason their way back into them every fucking time. The same thing is true with Nazis. The same true with anyone who's a fascistic or conspiratorial type person. Look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. That bitch is just all emotional reasoning. She feels like, you know, uh, Ilhan Omar signed in on a Quran. And so, like, she must, she's not really a senator somehow. Like, these people aren't using reasoning. They're not using logic. They're using emotions. They feel like they're right, so they must be in their minds. This is the toxic variation of what this becomes. Not just the internalization and harmful to your, harm to yourself, but the act of harm to others. Same with COVID deniers. Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. So you guys get why this is an issue? Folding ideas or pitch bomber guy, the camera in the airplane that was corrected to make the horizon flat rather than... Yes, yes, that was H-bomber guy. That was the... Um... Mm -hmm. No, the, 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 the difference between a wide-angle fish lens. God, I love H-bomber guy. He's so fucking great. So, yeah, that's what I said. It's H-Bomber. I love H-Bomber guy. I, I'll go back and watch some of his oldest videos. David Arini is still funny as shit to make fun of. Um, But yeah, this is the problem with confirmation bias as well, is that if you emotionally feel like you're true, then you don't look for things to go outside of your worldview. This is why like right-leaning area on places on the internet are fucking cesspools. It's just a giant circle jerk. Now, granted, the left does the same in certain things. But this is the thing. By the way, if you're enjoying the stream, please like this video. You would really appreciate it. Like the video that comes out after this, the one that's going to be just this section. You'd appreciate it. Or please feel free to donate. Um, you can donate at streamlabs.com slash transgrowtherapist. But is this making sense to everybody? I've watched it like five times, too, my core. It's fair. <laughs> I think it's really important that what we do is discuss these things because emotional reasoning, again, like we've said before, that directly corresponds to polarized thinking over generalization. Like this all connects to this higher grade, excuse me, confirmation bias. Kind of. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to say, but more of a horizontal switch, right? Like it's a, it's different kinds of confirm, confirm bias. I mean, and this doesn't even get into the idea of, like, right-leaning people being bad actors, right? There are people out there that will just lie and fabricate things. Blair White's uh, political compass test. Um, I forget the one guy that's been in a number of H-Bomber guy videos, the one that was, like, War on Christmas who was lying. Like, there's just... It, it, again, that's not even related to this. This is the people that died in the wall believe what they say, and they're just wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, because again, if you see an example, like again, with emotional reasoning, if you're a white person that's afraid of black people and you see a black person and then you walk across the street to get away from them and then they get upset because that's a microaggression and you're like, they're like, yeah, fuck you too. Now you're suddenly like, oh God, 
the black person was mad at me. That's right, Brittany. It's Paul Joseph Watson. PJW. Yeah, yeah. He, this person's a joke. He sells fucking soy filled pills and shit like that. The man's a clown. Uh. Yep. He looks like a shitty version of um, some more news with less charisma. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of sad. That goes, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's kind of fucking sad as shit. Um... It's funny because Xena has a, uh, an, a dairy issue, an issue with like cow dairy. So we eat a lot of goat cheese and we eat a lot of like um, vegan cheese stuff and all that. And like we just don't even carry regular milk in the house anymore. It's all just either almond milk or oat milk. And it's fucking great. Like it's. <laughs> but I just want you guys to understand this because this stuff can all go together, right? The shoulds can then lead to emotional reasoning, etc. I just want to make it really clear what this is. Um, it's really important in a lot of ways for us to emotion to, to notice these forms of like distorted thinking. The emotional reasoning one's a big one because I think this can actually keep people in self-propelling like positive feedback loops. A good example of this would be, you know, a conservative person who works super hard thinking that the libs are trying to destroy the traditional family while realizing that any kind of unionizing is being destroyed by his company and it's continually making his life worse. If he keeps blaming himself for that, saying that he's just not working hard enough, that's perfect for capitalism because they'll just grind him into dust. No, absolutely, Tiamat. Um, I love Costco for that. Like you said, there's worse companies to shill for. I fucking love that shit. Um, but I think I'll leave this here. Um, yeah, we'll cover more of these as time goes on. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, uh, you know, subscribe. You would make Brittany happy. Um, Brittany is angry if you don't like. Um, I'll send her after you. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you like this video, do all the stuff. Um, you can also donate to streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip. Donations are really appreciated, um, as are patrons. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash transgirltherapist. One of the reasons why we um, ask for donations on this channel is because I am the only one working in our household. Um, anything that would be helpful um, is really deeply, deeply appreciated. So thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.